Hi Tacoma, welcome back to your first grade TV classroom. Today is Tuesday, November 24th, and I'm Mrs. Oslin. As always, take a moment to check in with your zone. Think about what emotion you're feeling. Think about your I message. You'll remember your I message sounds like I feel hmm because hmm. And pay close attention to how strongly you're feeling your emotion. Take some think time. I'm gonna practice sharing my I message with Rashid. Rashid, I'm in the green zone because I feel focused and relaxed because I was so productive yesterday that I just feel good about today. I can focus. Now you go ahead and take a moment to share your I message with your learning buddy, someone in the room with you or with me on the screen. You'll remember that we've been practicing stop and think when we are feeling something at a four or a five on the feelings thermometer before we say or do anything. And then we go through our stop and stay cool steps. You'll remember the first step is you say, I feel like I'm losing control. Second, you stop. You give yourself a chili hug. Practice doing that with me. Then you practice breathing in and out for five. And let's practice doing that together. Here we go. Then hopefully you feel cool and ready for school or ready to share your I message with someone. You'll also remember that we've been practicing using the peace path to help us solve a conflict. The peace path helps us solve a conflict by finding nonviolent solutions to a conflict. Step one is you tell the problem. You use your I message to tell the other person how you're feeling, and then they say it back, which means they say, so you feel hmm because hmm. And then you switch, and the other person gets a chance to tell you how they feel, and you say back. And it's important to say it back so that everybody knows how everybody's feeling, and we all know and understand. We know we understand when we're able to say it back. Then you each take, turn, or take time to brainstorm or think of possible win-win solutions. You'll remember a win-win solution is one in which both people get some of what they want, and both people feel okay with the outcome. Then you have a conversation and you agree to try one of the win-win solutions. Some of the win-win solutions that we've been talking about are share, take turns, apologize, fix the problem, or get help. Today and every day when we come together, your job is to listen, share, and read. You are a strong listener when you have your eyes on the speaker, which right now is me, when you listen to the speaker, and, sorry, when you think about the words or the story that we're reading. You will get an opportunity to share. I do want you sharing your ideas. I want you talking about the book. And I want you listening, if there's someone in the room with you, to someone else's ideas because they probably have a, per a perspective that's different than yours and you might learn something. Today, we're gonna learn about friendship and what it means to be a friend. Take a look at this picture and Think about what kind of relationship these people have and how can you tell? Take some think time. Do you think they're friends? How can you tell? Tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rashid, I'm looking at this photo and I think these people are friends. They're hugging, they're smiling, they seem to be really happy and enjoying each other. Let's take a look at another photo. What relationship do you think these people have? 
How can you tell? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rashid, again, I think these people are friends because they have their arms around each other. They're kind of laying on each other, showing each other some affection. They're smiling. They seem to like each other and enjoy being around each other, just like the last picture. So what is a friend? Take some think time. Tell your learning buddy what you think you know about what is a friend. Go ahead. Now, keep that in mind as we read a story called Friends. It's written and illustrated by Helmi Heine. Heine. And look at this front cover. Think about what you already know, use your background knowledge about friends, knowing that the title of this book is called Friends. What do you think this book is going to be about? Tell your learning buddy what you think this book is going to be about. Rashid, the title of the book is Friends, and I'm seeing some animals and they seem to be riding a bike together. And that's something that I do with my friends or family too, is we go riding bikes together and they seem to be smiling, so they must be enjoying it. I think this is gonna be about their friendship. You might've said something different and that's okay. Now think about what you know about friends and what is a friend as we read this story. Every morning when Charlie Rooster strutted into the barn to wake the other animals, Johnny Mouse and Fat Percy went with him to help. Good friends always stick together, they said. When this job was done, they wheeled their bicycle out of the barn and set off for their morning ride. What do the animals say good friends do? I'm going to reread a couple sentences and think about what the animals say that good friends do. Every morning when Charlie Rooster strutted into the barn to wake the other animals, Johnny Mouse and Fat Percy went with him to help. Good friends always stick together, they said. That's right. They said that good friends always stick together. Now take some think time. Do you agree with that? Do you think good friends always stick together? Why or why not? Now tell your learning buddy what you think about good friends always stick together. Rashid, I think it's important that friends stick together. And I, I, I don't think that means that they always have to agree, but they stick together and they have that term, they have each other's backs, which means they support each other. Now, let's keep reading and thinking about friends and what is a friend. Also think about what makes you a good friend. They could ride down the roughest paths and up the steepest cliffs. No curve was too sharp for them and their bicycle. No puddle was deep enough to stop them. One day they played a game of hide and seek by the village pond. While Johnny Mouse was hiding, he discovered an old boat lying in the tall grass. He showed his friends, and they decided to play pirates. Good friends always decide things together, they said. Now take some think time. What did they say on this page that good friends always do? I'll reread and think about that. 
While Johnny Mouse was hiding, he discovered an old boat lying in the tall grass. He showed his friends and they decided to play pirates. Good friends always decide things together, they said. That's right, they said, good friends always decide things together. Do you agree? Why or why not? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rashid, this made me think of the peace path and how good friends decide on a win-win solution and good friends always decide things together. That made me think of using win-win solutions. So both people get some of what they want and both people feel good about the outcome. So I tend to agree that good friends always decide things together. Now, let's keep reading to learn about how these friends are treat each other and you're gonna think about you as a friend. What makes you a good friend? Johnny Mouse took the tiller, Charlie Rooster opened his wings to make the sail, and Fat Percy plugged up the hole in the side of the boat by sitting on it. They sailed out on the open water, and as the day went on, they felt very brave and bold. They conquered the village pond. But hunger finally sent them back to shore. First, they tried to catch a fish, fish, but their stomachs rumbled so loudly that they frightened all the fish away. <laughs> They're using the mouse's tail. That was a clever little detail. Then they went looking for cherries. They shared them, some for Johnny Mouse, some for Charlie Rooster, and twice as many for Fat Percy. Johnny Mouse didn't mind, but Charlie Rooster complained. He said it was unfair, so they gave him the cherry stones. Friends are always fair, they said. Now what are they saying on this page about friends? Friends are always fair. Take some think time. Do you agree? Or do you disagree? Why or why not? Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking about friends are always fair. I find it so interesting that we're all talking about the same thing, but we have different ideas and different things to say about it. They ate so many cherries that they all got stomach aches and had to sit down for a while before they started back. As evening fell and the shadows grew longer, they bicycled home. Behind the hen house near the water barrel, they swore to be friends forever. Good friends always stick together, they said. They decided to spend the night in Johnny Mouse's house, but Charlie Rooster got stuck in the doorway. Then Fat Percy invited them to spend the night with him, but Johnny Mouse said he didn't want to sleep in a pigsty. So, there seems to be a problem or a conflict. Think about what's happening and why can't they spend the night together? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rashid, I'm thinking that they said that good friends always stick together, but they're having a hard time finding a place to sleep that's good for all of them. Hmm, that seems hard. This made me think that just because we said that good friends stick together, it doesn't mean they have to do everything together or that they have to do something that makes them uncomfortable just because their friends are doing it. But that night they dreamed about each other the way true friends do.
And then our author and illustrator has this blurb, and that's him in a rowboat at the top. And he says, this is him writing about this book. I love my friends and I look after them well. In Africa, for example, where I lived for 12 years, I had a wild pig that stayed with me in my house. What? Whenever I went to town, I put a collar with its name and address on my pet just in case it got lost. As soon as the collar was on, the pig jumped into the front seat of my car and urged me to go. I also had chickens in my backyard. Each one had a name. None of them ended up in my pot because friends with names you simply cannot eat. They thanked me by sharing their eggs with me. I was not at all fond of the mice in my house until one day I found a baby mouse caught in a glass jar. Of course I saved its life. It overwhelmed me with its charm and I changed my attitude completely. We lived together happily ever after. For the time being, my best friend is a sheep that likes to go fishing with me in New Zealand where I spend long sunny winters. So now I know that our author and illustrator used his pet pig, chicken, and mouse as inspiration for the characters of this book. And you can kind of see in that picture, in a, he has his friend the sheep that's going fishing with him. Hmm. Now check back in. What is a friend? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rashid, I'm thinking a friend is a person that I choose and enjoy spending time with because they make me happy and we have fun together. But that doesn't mean that we don't have conflict that we have to solve and always trying to be fair. Now, your job is to write about what makes you a good friend. You're going to do this in your learning notebook and you can send it to me here at the TV classroom or you can send it to your teacher. You're also going to practice reading. Find your snap words in your books and also when you're reading and writing, think about functional writing and what you're noticing. You can read your word wall. You can read it loud like a monster. Scary like a witch, squeaky like a mouse, whisper like a secret, or invent your own. And if you have a way that you are reading your word wall that you think I have to see, ask an adult if it's okay to video you and send it to us here to our email address, our TV classroom right there, uh, and we will share it. If you don't want us to share it, just let us know and we'll tell people what your way is. And if you're not comfortable being recorded, you can always just write it down and email it to us or send it to us in a letter. I want to also remind you to continue tracking your reading goals and sending this to your teacher, paying really close attention to whether or not you were focused while you were reading. Now, I want to remind you that there is no school Wednesday, tomorrow, or Thursday the next day, or Friday the next day, because Thursday is a holiday, Thanksgiving, and Friday is also a holiday, Native American Heritage Day. And Mrs. Wally and I challenged you with our Tacoma Public Librarians yesterday to make a plan to figure out where your closest library is and how you can get books from that from them. I mean, if you need help, reach out to those librarians because they're so helpful and they have so many resources and they can help you find a book about anything you want to read. So now first graders, this is your five minute break. This is your chance to take care of your needs, but also make sure you have your materials ready for math with Mrs. Wally. You will need your learning buddy, your whiteboard and marker, and your counters. Thank you so much for reading and thinking with me today. I hope you have a great long weekend and I will see you back here on Monday. Bye.
There we go. Check one, two. Check one, two. Okay. Check, 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 check. Test, check, 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 check. Hi, first graders, it's true or false Tuesday, which is great practice for what we've been learning. So let's go ahead and read these expressions and decide, are they true or are they false? Are you ready? Remember, when we read, we read from left to right. So I'm going to get my highlighter out. And you can read the equation with me. Here we go. You ready? Seven plus two is the same as five. Hmm, true or false? Mah, mah. Why is it false? Oh, because seven plus two is nine, and nine is not the same as five. All right, let's go to the next one. Five plus one is the same as six. Hmm. Ding, ding, ding. 
bing, bing, bing. Five plus one is the same as six. It's true. How do you know? Right. Five. One more is six. Awesome job. Okay. Five plus four is the same as one. Hmm. What did this person do wrong? They subtracted, didn't they? If this was a subtraction sign, it'd be five minus four equals one, and that would be true. But this is a plus sign. That means we're going to put the two parts together and count it all up. I have five, and I have four. That is not one. False. Okay, you ready for the next one? Nine is the same as two plus two plus five. Hmm. Is that true or false? Ding, 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 ding. Tell me, how do you know? Oh, two and two is four. And four and five is nine. And nine is the same as nine. They're the same thing. Ding, ding, ding. Great thinking. Does anyone think about it a different way? Oh, someone said five and two is seven and two more is nine. Great thinking. Remember, there's lots of ways to think about math. Zero is the same as zero plus zero. Hmm. True or false? Ding, 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 ding. Zero plus zero is the same as zero. If I have nothing and I add nothing, I still have nothing. It's kind of a silly problem, isn't it? All right. Let's see what we're gonna learn today. Ooh, it's a review day. So that means when we're done with today, if this still doesn't make sense, you need to make sure that you contact your teacher and get help from them, all right? Okay, today we are reviewing how to tell if an expression is true or false. Just did a great warm up. Now we're going to find partners and we're gonna draw them. You ready? Okay. So let's go ahead and switch me to here. I guess we're going to be drawing or building if you have cubes. It says find the partners and make them with connecting cubes. Draw them. Well, I don't have connecting cubes here at home, so I'm going to draw them. So I'm looking at this one first. And this one is one. And then how many more do I get to six? Two, three. Four, five, six. One plus, how many do we draw? Yeah, five. Equals, let's look at our other one. Equals sign right here, right? In between the two expressions we're going to make. Okay, what's my first partner on this one right here? Four, I'm gonna do it in a different color. One, two, three, four, break it hard stick. Five, six. What's my equation for this picture? Four plus two. So one plus five is the same as four plus two. That's a true expression because this is six. And this is six. Did you do it? Nice job. Reset. Okay. You're going to try this one on your own, and then we're going to talk about it. I'm going to give you one minute, and then we'll look at the answer. It says draw, so you can do this on your whiteboard. Is three plus five the same as five plus three a true equation. Draw to explain why or why not. So, is this true? Three plus five is the same as five plus three. 
draw to prove why yes or no. Are you ready? Go. <laughs> Are you ready? What did you decide? Was this true? You said yes. Why did you say it was true? Oh, because three and five more is the same as five and three more. Because this is yeah, eight and this is eight and eight is the same as eight. Great job, first graders. Reset your board. Okay, let's go on to the next one. It says evaluate. Circle the true equations. So we're just going to circle the ones that are true. So I'm going to put me so you can see me for a little while. Hello. All right. So. Let's go through and let's talk about each one. Four equals six. Is that true? Mm -mm. So we don't circle it. Nine minus five is the same as two plus two. What is nine minus five? Four. What is two plus two? Four, is four the same as four? It is, we get to circle that one. Okay, you try this one on your own. Two plus seven is the same as five plus three. I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds. Are those true? What's two plus seven? What's five plus three and are they the same? Two plus seven is nine and five plus three is eight. That's not true. Seven is the same as four plus three. True or false? True, four plus three is seven. Seven is the same as seven. Okay, four plus two is the same as four minus two. Is that true or false? Why is it false? Uh-huh, four plus two is six. Four minus two is two. Is six and two the same? No. Eight plus two is the same as four plus six. Is that true? Bing, bing, bing. Both are friends of 10, so we get to circle that one too. Woohoo! Nice job, first graders. All right. We're gonna explain something. Boom joins two cubes and six cubes. Buzz has 10 cubes, but then loses two cubes. Do they have the same number of cubes? So I want you to try and figure this out. I'm going to give you about a minute and a half. I'm gonna read it again. And I'm gonna highlight each person's in a different color. And you're gonna see if you can find the answer. Boom joins two cubes and six cubes. Buzz has 10 cubes, but loses two cubes. Do they have the same number of cubes? How do you know? Are you ready? Do you have a picture yet? Make sure you model it or use your counters. Mm-hmm. 
Are you ready? Okay. Let's take a look. What did you think? Were they the same? Oh, some said yes, some said no. Let's take a look and decide if this is a true equation or not. Boom had two and joined them with six. Boom had eight cubes. Buzz had 10 and lost two. 10 minus two is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is the same as eight. Buzz and Boom have the same number of cubes. All right. Reset your board. All right, you get to see me for a little while now. Okay, think about the equal sign. Write the number of shapes below each group. You're gonna just write it on your board and you're gonna write the equal sign if it's a true equation. Draw a line through the equal sign if it is not a true equation. So I'm gonna do it here on the PowerPoint, and you're going to draw it on your whiteboard. So go ahead. How many dots do you see here? Three. Woo! My that jumped. That didn't work very well, did it? Let's try that again. Ooh, this computer is jumpy today. Three. And how many is here? Four. Okay. How many dots here? Five. Maybe that's here. Two. Is it a true equation? What is three plus four? Mm -hmm. Seven. What's five plus two? Seven. So we can write in equal sign. Okay, let's do the next one. You go ahead, count the picture, write the expression you think it is. Okay. Four and five. What about on this side? Three. Yeah. Okay. Seven. Is this a true equation? Are they equal? What's four plus five? Nine. What's three plus seven? Ten. Are ten and nine the same? No. So this is what we do. We write the equal sign and then we go, nope. Does not equal. Okay, let's go to the next one. It says five plus four equals six plus two. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna write this on your whiteboard at the top. I'll show you my whiteboard. Here we're on your whiteboard. Okay, do it now. Five plus four is the same as six plus two. You are going to draw a picture and decide, is this true or false? If it's true, you leave it just like this. If it's false, you draw that line through. Go ahead and begin. Was it true or untrue? Check your work against mine. 
I said untrue because five plus four is nine and six plus two is eight. This is an untrue equation. All right, first graders. Awesome job reviewing today. This is one of my favorite parts of math. I love finding true and untrue equations. I think it's like a puzzle. I think it's kind of fun. So your assignment today is to do page 201 and 202, right? You're going to do what we just did. You're going to practice it again all by yourself. Let's check and see if we met our learning goal today. Today we reviewed how to tell if an expression is true or false. Did we solve both sides of the expression? Yeah. Did we compare both sides to see if they were the same or different? Yeah. If they are the same, do we say it was true? If they are different, do we say it is false? Here's us pat on the back. Nice job. All right. It is time for our affirmation. Now, we're coming up on the time when we get to be thankful. And it's, we should be thankful all the time, but this is the time we get to really reflect and think about being thankful. So our affirmation today is, I am thankful for the things that I have. We all have different things and we all have different needs that aren't or may all be being met, but we need to be thankful no matter what our circumstances are for the things that we do have, because we all have something. So I'm thankful for the things that I have. Your turn. Great job, first graders. I hope you have a great holiday and we'll see you next week. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.